In the Eastern Cape of South Africa, 16 vet students are taking part in one of the world's most challenging training courses. Oh God, I'm blowing the vein. Whoa, hold it. It's been, at times, terrifying for me, so it must be paralyzing for them. There's blood. I'm very bloody, so okay. Sweat. Lift the right up. And tears. You've made me cry twice, and it's gonna be our third time in a minute. As the students soak up their experience. Amakala, South Africa. The 16 students are coming towards the end of their time here. They arrived with limited clinical experience and will leave having worked on some of the world's most dangerous and awe-inspiring animals. I had no choice but to hold the horns, keep low, keep safe. At the beginning of their course, Tom, Camilla and Natalie were amazed to see lions for the first time. <laughs> wow. wow. And today, their teacher, Dr. Will Foles, is giving them the chance to work up close with them again, this time with cubs. Three lion cubs need to be relocated to a nearby breeding program. Although still cubs, they're over one year old and now no longer feeding from their mother. They need to be moved on to avoid any conflict within the pride between them and the alpha male lions. In the wild, this would happen naturally, but in a reserve like this, they need to be helped, as they haven't learned to hunt for themselves yet. Cambridge student Tom has had his love of veterinary studies revitalised by the course. Working with big cats is going to be amazing. I, I mean, I've got a real passion for them. I've worked with them in captivity in awful conditions in Thailand, and have, to have an opportunity to work with them under sort of better circumstances like this is, you know, it's fantastic. I couldn't ask for more. As lions are so dangerous, it's vital to get the dosage right when darting them. Otherwise, they will wake up too quickly. If there's an issue, always be prepared for more lions. You might have to dart more cats, so have plenty of darts, plenty of needles, plenty of reversal on hand. OK, other big problem today, conditions. So we are working below body temperature. We've had a few days of rain. The chances are they could be on the chilly side and we need to watch temperature very carefully. OK, if they start wet, what do you do? Dry them. How do you dry them? Towel. Towels, jackets, overalls. Hair dryer. Hair dryers. Did you all bring your hair dryers? <laughs> <laughs> to separate the cubs from the adults, the team will send in a cow carcass as a distraction. Whilst the lions are busy feeding, Will can dart the cubs before moving the carcass, hoping the adult lions will follow. The students have been split up into four groups, and as their mentor, I'll be overseeing Tom and Camilla. I have seen a lion turn around and whack a guy half a semi asleep and just go buff like that, and it opened his hand there. Because their claws are razor sharp. I'm going to be working by the head. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there's the bait. Good over. Okay. The lions have taken the bait, and whilst they're busy feeding, Will starts to dart the three cubs. Here we go, here we go. That's one. Yeah, first dart's in. Notice how it didn't even react that much. But coming face to face with such ferocious predators is making the students nervous. If they start running, you can't, you can't run away, can you? Back off. Always keep an eye on it, because it might literally just flop, boom, and this sort of thing. If you turn your back on it, you have no idea what's going on. But even if you know what you're doing, things can still go wrong. Yeah. If it properly wakes up, you have to run, and there will be someone with a rifle standing by, but that's, you know, worst case scenario. So hopefully that's not going to happen. Oh my god, how bloody they are. Mm -hmm. There we go. Again, lovely shot. Quadriceps there. That's very good. Are we timing this one? Yeah. Confirm that the one that hasn't been darted is closest to me. Uh, yeah, the dart one. It's all right, they're on it. Come on, just give me a bum, yeah. That's it. Ooh. There you go. But the, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's saying, yeah, he knows something's up. The male lion was massive. He was a really impressive beast. I mean, you wouldn't want to <laughs> face him. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be in an enclosure with him uh, without some really powerful sedatives. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hopefully it doesn't fall on the rope either. That's the other thing. Yeah, it's down. 
As the first cob falls under sedation, its face lands in the carcass. The team fear it will struggle to breathe properly. That's not ideal. And the situation gets worse when the other lions push the carcass on top of the cub. Well, now we're going to have to just... Will is worried and decides to change the plan. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, look at... <laughs> Where is he? The ground team pull the carcass away earlier than planned to improve the cub's positioning. Watch those lions there, hey? Just keep watching. Keep watching the big lions. Okay, let's load. The team need to stay alert, though, because if the adults realise what's happening, they'll attack. All right. So This is one of those I'm jealous of Will moments. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm always jealous of Will. <laughs> the decoy has worked, and the cubs must now be moved to a safe area to be assessed. So while you're working, guys, take very important note of pulse strength. The team start working on the cubs. Every procedure carried out on the course is necessary for the health of the animals. That's it, that's it. First, they check the airways. Just check the airways, check their mouths, they might have food. This involves the dangerous task of putting your hand close to a lion's mouth. Monitoring parameters, please. What are you going to do first? Make sure the airway's clear. And for third year student Camilla, who's already anxious about working with lions, it's a daunting prospect. Pull its tongue. Don't stick your fingers in its mouth. How do we do that? Just if it's, yeah, get its tongue out of its mouth, in between its teeth and pull it out. That's fine. No, I think that's fine. That's fine, okay. Then keep its head dependent. <laughs> that was very scary because we'd just been talking to Steve about how they might just wake up and bite you and I had to stick my hand into its throat. So um, that was quite daunting. I'm very bloody, is that okay? Yeah, I just remember to wash afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Then pick your nose, please, while you're working. Okay. Lions carry parasites that can cause harm to humans, so it's very important to stay clean when working with them. Have anyone got a temperature yet? Natalie, respiration's down to 16. 16? It's quite weak though. Monitoring one of the other cubs is Natalie. As one of the least experienced students, she's still struggling with her nerves under pressure. I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to be described, but at the same time, if my decisions go wrong, and it's the wrong outcome, all the blame is going to be placed on my shoulders. OK, I'll just, I'll get the legs. Should we take the towels off while we look? Yeah. yeah. I think when you've done this job as long as I and Will have, where you've had the chance to be so close to so many incredible animals, you forget just how spectacular they are, and they're right in front of you. Natalie's getting increasingly worried about the cub's breathing. Respirations went down to 16. Charlotte steps in to calm her fears. No, Natalie, it's 20, it's OK. It's 20, it's fine, yeah. As the lions lose their ability to regulate their temperature while sedated, the students must be vigilant in monitoring it. If it drops too low, this could be dangerous for the lion. Give me parameters, please. Group four, have you got parameters yet? That's come out at 35.5. Yeah. That is quite low. I would go blankets on that animal, please. Suddenly, Tom and I realise we need help as the cub's temperature keeps on dropping. This one's getting quite cold now. Okay. And it's rest for dropping as well, so we can start loading. Yep. Yeah. One, two, three. We decide to wake him up as soon as possible. Right, he's got long arms. Good man. Give me time since first dart. 22 minutes. But there's a risk involved in waking the lions up sooner than planned, and Will steps in to make the decision. You're a little bit concerned about your anaesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, we're sort of rushing the, the reverse a little bit. When is a good time to reverse? As soon as possible. How long do you need to wait? 20 minutes. At least half an hour if you can. If you can't, if you've got no option, you reverse. Okay. Do you have an option? Not really. Um, but, but I'm happy. He's pink. Refill time's good. Respiration's deep enough. I think you're fine. He decides it's safe to get the reversal drug in, but the cub's position in the crate is not ideal. If he wakes up so close to the front, he could struggle to breathe. Okay, so make a plan. Try to push it further back in. OK, one, two, three. Lift it right up. Okay. Happy with the position? Finally, the lion's in a good position, and the reversal drug goes in. So go in at 90 degrees to the skin. Draw back. Very good. For the students, there's a nervous wait. How long since the reversal? It's 12 minutes since the reversal. Okay, we're getting some blinking. The cub starts to wake up, and we're all relieved to see he looks healthy. 
at this stage. If you stimulate these cats... Chris they'll... uses an unusual technique to check his responsiveness. Ah, uh, you see, you don't get taught this at university. So a bit of voluntary movement there, isn't there? There's some sense here. I can't tell you how brilliant the experience was, uh, getting hands on with a lion. Right. <laughs> to get that close to an animal that powerful, is, you know, is something I'm not going to forget. The team have worked well, and the lions head off to their new home. But work's not over for the students. It's a new day, and their final mission is to carry out invaluable conservation work on a black rhino. They head off to the Great Fish River Reserve. Black rhinos have been pushed to the brink of extinction by illegal poaching for their horns. By taking DNA samples and inserting a microchip today, the team will provide vital information to help track this species and deter poachers. Black rhinos may be smaller than the white rhinos the students worked with, but they can be even more ferocious. It's by far the uh, most dangerous animal that we're going to be working with. Uh, don't be fooled by their size. They, they're small, but they're heavy little things. The biggest danger here is the mother. Okay, if, if a little black rhino gets up, it can beat you up, but you don't want that mom coming back. So we'll hopefully, the helicopter's job is to keep the mom away um, while we work on the, the baby. Okay. Natalie's in charge of all injections. Black rhino, and particularly black rhino in the south of the country, very sensitive. Stab it. Stab it. Just whack it in. Last time Natalie faced a rhino, she had to overcome her fear of doing an injection for the first time. Okay, pull the needle out, start again. What's stopping you from just banging that needle in? I don't really want to like, go be the one that steps forward and messes it up. Everybody has to do it for the first time. Like, that needle has to go through. Yeah. Just bang it in. I am so indecisive. I can't, I can't choose things for myself. I find it hard to pick what I want for my dinner. She often questions herself, but her instinct is usually proved right. So, good job, Nat. Right. I think Natalie might be another one that underestimates herself because I, th I think she's perfectly capable of leading a group and she'll, she'll learn that if she gets the opportunity. Today, Will's given her the chance to put her nerves aside and take control. It's a big challenge for an inexperienced student. I'm worried about Natalie because she's that little bit younger. She is worried that it's not her place to step forward. If she doesn't do it right now, she will regret this forever. Coming up, just mind that will Natalie rise to the challenge? Oh, needle babe, there's not a bigger syringe, it's another bottle. <laughs> and the group say an emotional goodbye. You really inspired every single one of us, I think, to go on and do bigger and better things. The team are out in the Great Fish River Reserve, carrying out important conservation work on a young black rhino. And for Natalie, who's on injections, it's a chance to prove herself. First, Will needs to dart the rhino and move it away from the mother. He finds a four-year-old female. Will takes his shot and the team wait for her to go down. The helicopter chases the mother away to a safe distance. But is it far enough away for an anxious Natalie? The rhino has landed in the thicket, so the ground crew must hack away at the vegetation to give the students room to work on the car. Just, just monitor the city from a distance. Just give them space to remove all this vegetation here, please. Natalie watches nervously, waiting for her turn. Yeah, of what's going on with pressure? But first, the ground crew saw the end of the horn off for mineral analysis. This is used to create a regional map of rhino horn origins. Meanwhile, Cat drills into the horn to implant the microchip as an additional anti-poaching measure. A notch is taken from the calf's ear. Notching enables staff to clearly identify individual animals. Can I start going to the pen, Uh Yeah, just mind that blade there. 
<laughs> How's that skin? Finally, it's Natalie's big moment as she steps in to take charge of the injections. She'll be given the rhino antibiotics and multivits to keep it in good health. Without bending it. Oh, needle bent. Rhino skin's a lot thicker than I expected. Bent a few of the needles. She presses on and tries again. Finally, she successfully completes her first injection. I try to ignore all the other activities that were happening around outside me and just focus on what I had to get done. Has anybody taken a temp? Who has the thermometer? Yep. The more injections she gives, the more her confidence grows. We kind of got a conveyor belt system going, so I'd inject past the empty syringe back and they'd fill it up and get me a new one ready. So I had about two going at the same time. It was very hectic, but it was quite like efficient way of doing it. But just when she's on a roll, she realises there's a problem. Is there another bottle? As the rhino is much bigger than they'd initially thought, more drugs will be needed and there's only small syringes left. Thank you. So we ran out of 20 ml syringes and had to go down to 10, which like doubled the amount of injections I had to give. So I ended up having to do, instead of the five injections that I'd planned, doing 15. Yeah. Is this group done all your treatments? Yeah, all the treatments are done. Yeah. Is your antidote ready? Antidote ready, oh. Well, how much was in the dark? Finally, it's on to the antidote. It's a big task as black rhino can be very aggressive when they're awake. She'll need to plan her escape route. When I'm in like dangerous situations, I don't think I really think things through from like the dangerous aspect of it. Okay, enter that's in. Let's move out the way when you lift it. That's it. I'm not gonna have to get up like that. There's relief for Natalie as she makes it onto the truck just as the rhino wakes up. Dean injections. <laughs> Fully conscious, the rhino heads out into the bush. The procedures were a success and Natalie has conquered her nerves. I think I'm definitely not second guessing myself now. I'm just focusing on the task at hand and getting the job done. It's the students' last night in camp, and Will has thrown them a goodbye party. Jackie! <laughs> it's been a tough few weeks physically and emotionally, and throughout it all, the students have been supported by Will. On behalf of the group, I'd just like to say thank you, Will, for everything that you've done. Thank you so much. That's my pleasure. I thought, you know, I was coming out here to work with some wonderful animals and I can see them all sitting around the <laughs> yeah. you've, all been a, you've all been great and I uh, really appreciate all your help and patience and support. Mm. Thank you. So I think we all know I've made a few mistakes this holiday. <laughs> holiday? Holiday! <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd like to think that you can learn from your mistakes. And I've also learned I'm going to make a lot more mistakes. And not many people can make me cry. You've made me cry twice. And it's going to be a third time in a minute. And <laughs> <laughs> I had many expectations for this whole course, I think all of which came true. I've had the most fantastic <coughs> time, learnt so much. You really inspired every single one of us, I think, to go on and do bigger and better things. So. There will never be another course like this because you guys have made it the special course that it's been. A combination of personalities, <laughs> your dedication, the times when you've really I've given you a challenge and you just haven't backed down, you've just kept going. So I'd appreciate if whatever we've managed to stir in you, don't let that die. Just keep keep it going and, and see where it takes you. Thank you. Thank you. After a good night, it's finally time to leave the reserve. In the past two weeks, the students have grown very close 
and it's an emotional goodbye for many. I don't think you really can prepare for a course like this. It's a chance of a lifetime. It's amazing. This course has definitely helped me be more confident in my decision making and I know now that I'll be able to carry that on into my future career. The major change that has occurred over the course, it's really awoken my passion for, for veterinary medicine. I don't want to go back home. This is too good to be true. I, don't, I just don't want to stay here forever. But I guess I have to. It's just been a roller coaster. It's, it's been relentless. It's been flat out. And I think that that's the most amazing thing about this two weeks, is that the two weeks that they spend here could send them on a journey that they never even knew existed. Just open their eyes to a whole different world. And even if it doesn't, it will always remain in their memories as one of the most mind-blowing two weeks they ever spent on this earth. But as Will says goodbye to one group, another is already arriving in South Africa. The new students are a more experienced and confident group. It's time for Will to up the stakes and make life even more challenging. Next time... The temperature's 41.8. That's what we want to get it down. And... Things are heating up for the new students. Guys, any more, no water in the back of the pickup? If we didn't call this red heart piece down and call it down quickly, the only choice would probably be euthanasia. So the temperature's still 41.8. And even Will begins to lose his cool. Come, we need to move it, guys. This animal has been too hot for too long. Let's go. Okay, it's getting pretty bloated, guys. 